I used to watch painters. I was an art history major in college, and I always envied the commitment, the focus, um, and the insanity of, of, of modern abstract work and the artists that did it. I, I, uh, after college, I went back to New York and I was working at the Museum of Modern Art and I used to see the really great stuff up close and personal. I remember clearly a very famous painting by Picasso called Guernica. I was going by the painting on my way upstairs and I brushed by it or was close to it and suddenly everything seemed to come into place. And I turned and I, I'm overwhelmed by what this is and what it was in terms of this man's ability to, to, to borrow himself from other artists, to have this infusion of, of thought and emotion come together at one point and facing with, uh, with this great painting, I, I got as close as, as I could and there was this um, transposition of the painting and the history of that painting that just moved into me and years later I would start to use this in my studio practices approaching my own canvases. Um, how would I solve the problem? Uh, the, the use of painting over, the sum of destructions, if you will, where I would paint canvases over and over again until finally they worked. Because if you follow the, the history of, of, the, of the painting of Guernica, Picasso worked endlessly on this thing for about a month or two months, redoing it, rearranging his parts until he had a final um, epiphany and the painting hung in perfection. I became a photographer and I was a photographer for 20, 20, 30 years and then I realized that it wasn't enough depth. I wanted to go further, more soul, um, less production and I started painting around the time my father died. It seemed to be a catalyst for me and I was able to move out of commercial photography and into fine art and I've been in it for the last 22, 23 years. It's one of those compulsions that, that uh, sort of like the bit on a horse. Once you set it in the mouth, there's no getting rid of it. And it has now become the regulator of my life, if you will. So I, I struggle daily with why abstraction. And I think there is, um, for my personality, the appeal is so strong that I have the opportunity to work out on a, on a surface like a canvas um, a resolved visual image that has come together from a, a number of different disciplines and sources because you know I was an art a history major in college but I don't want it to influence me in any way. The, uh, the two things are what I feel in my heart, or the eye of the heart, if you will, and then the hand itself, the intelligence of the hand. And I can only get there after a series of events that comprise the history of the canvas. Usually three or four repaintings over uh, a multiple month time span. And um, each day the canvas will change. I frequently will reach what I consider to be a solution. And then in turn, it's not working. I have to turn the canvas upside down, start over again. So I'm drawing on the past from cave paintings through uh, uh, Monet, through Picasso, but I don't, I'm not conscious of it. I don't know. I, I, I like to paint mood, my moods. Um, I'm relatively sensitive to my environment be it a, a dinner out or a movie or a song on a radio and I will take that and try and run with it and see what I can get out of that. So I'm basically painting myself and my emotions. It's a narcissistic, uh, if you will, uh, cesspool of self-absorption and, and I cannot, I cannot seem to get away from that. It's, it's, um, it feeds me.